Welcome to our safety training series. In this video, we will establish some safe procedures to properly operate and maintain angle grinders. When it comes to repairs on tanks, an angle grinder is a tool that will most certainly be a part of your inventory. A grinder may be as helpful as it is dangerous if operated carelessly, not properly maintained, or used for the task it was not designed for. With knowledge of an angle grinder's proper use and its maintenance, you will become a safer employee and an example to your fellow crew members. Make sure you always come prepared with the personal protective equipment to operate the grinder. This would include your hard hat, safety glasses, steel-toed boots, gloves, earplugs, knee pads, and a clear face shield with a clear lens. In certain environments, the use of earmuffs, respiratory protection, FRCs, and a fire extinguisher may be a requirement. So let's take a look at the procedures and guidelines that need to be followed in order to safely operate and maintain angle grinders. Before you start, ensure you have been issued a hot work permit by your customer. Also ensure the work area has been atmospherically monitored thoroughly and it is safe to actually perform hot work. Once you've established it is safe to perform hot work, there are four things you need to be concerned about with regards to bonded abrasive wheels and grinder safety. These four items include handling, storage, the machine, and its use. When handling bonded abrasives, remember, they are baked like cookies. They are hard wheels, but somewhat brittle and can be broken. They shouldn't be dropped from any height, whether they are in a box or not and shouldn't be left laying around on the floor or leaning against the wall. They should be treated with some respect to their vulnerabilities. A wheel that is cracked or broken, even if it's fiberglass reinforced, has the potential to explode. Wheels should not be left on portable tools when transferring the tool or when storing the tool. When storing wheels, you must consider humidity and temperature. Moisture is detrimental to grinding wheels. They absorb moisture which can break down the bond over time. Always store them in a clean, dry place and never use a wet or obviously damp grinding wheel. Wheels can be stored in the box, flat or on a hook as long as the wheels have adequate support while awaiting use. If you suspect a wheel or box of wheels has been dropped, do not use those wheels, discard them. Remember to always inspect the wheels upon arrival as shipping damage can occur. Above all, rotate all bonded product, first in, first out. The least amount of time abrasive sit, the less moisture they can absorb and the less chance some other form of damage can occur. When storing your angle grinder, clean and service them according to the manufacturer's recommendations. This includes lubricating and changing or replacing accessories. Keep a written maintenance record on portable grinders as well as other power tools. Upon obtaining an angle grinder, the employee must check that it does not vibrate or operate roughly. Make sure the angle grinder has a safety or dual action trigger switch and does not have a trigger locking mechanism. Make sure the wheel fits and is sized for the angle grinder you are going to use. If something has to be altered then that is a sign not to proceed. Make sure the tool is in good condition and has no breaks or damages. Assure that the wheel and grinder operate at the same peak speed of rotation or RPM. Check the cord for damage and any exposed wires. Check the bearings for play and make sure the correct guarding is used for the correct wheel. Certain wheels require specific guards. Some wheels require you to rotate the guard. The guard must be frequently examined for buildup of particles of metal or abrasive from work, also known as SWARF, as it will block the wheel's effective workability. Make sure the tool has the proper wheel mounting system. Typically a set of flanges and locking nuts are used. Flanges should be checked every time you mount a wheel for wear, debris, burrs, etc. An arbor ring from a wheel can separate from the wheel and embed itself in the flange. Attention also must be paid to the size of the flange. Flanges should be a minimum of a quarter of the diameter of the wheel, but a third of the diameter is recommended. 
If using a T1 cutoff wheel, the flanges should be equal in diameter. Any equipment or parts that do not pass inspection or are not operating properly should be removed from service and tagged, do not use, until they are repaired. To change discs, start by disconnecting all power to the angle grinder. Grab your spanner and wrench and insert the prongs into the two holes that appear in the drive bolt between the disc and the angle grinder motor. Use the wrench to secure the bolt on the bottom of the disc and turn the pronged spanner in the opposite direction of the disc direction arrow, usually located at the bottom of the disc. Use the wrench to keep the disc from turning. There may also be a spindle lock button that will hold the disc in place. Turn the nut until the disc comes away from your angle grinder. If your disc has a flanged nut, hold down the stop button on your angle grinder to hold the disc in place. Then using the palm of your gloved hand, rotate the disc in the opposite direction as the arrow on the disc. Or counterclockwise. This should loosen the nut enough to remove it with your fingers. Put your new grinding disc on the drive bolt in the same manner as the old one sat. Hand tighten the new disc in the opposite direction from which you removed the old disc. We cannot stress enough that all power must be disconnected from the grinder when you are changing discs. Believe it or not, where things usually go wrong is in the grinder's use. The wheel could have been handled and stored perfectly up to this moment. The machine could be brand new. You might even have mounted the wheel correctly. Now what are you going to do? Consider the following. Do you know what you want to accomplish? Do you know the limitations of the product? Do you know the limitations of the tool? Do you know your own limitations? Know these answers before handling the grinder. Now, ensure all crew members are aware of the grinding operations and keep a safe distance from the line of fire when the grinder is in operation. Be aware of flammable materials in your surroundings before starting the machine and position yourself away from them. Remove loose material, tools, or debris from the work area while the grinding is to be performed. Use welding screens as necessary to prevent flying particles from hitting other workers. Now what do you do next? Plug the tool into your GFCI or attach your airline. Ensure electrical equipment has a three wire cord with a ground or is double insulated and that is also plugged into a ground receptacle. It is important to note the following. Never remove the third prong from the plug. Never carry a grinder by the cord or hose. Never yank a cord or hose to disconnect it from the receptacle. Keep cords away from heat, oil, and sharp edges. Disconnect tools when not in use, before servicing, cleaning, and when changing accessories. Ensure you maintain firm footing. Balance yourself and hold the tool with both hands down and away, or under a table. Run the tool up to speed with no load on it, to make sure everything is the way it should be. To turn the grinder on, the first action is for the operator to push the lock off lever towards the back of the tool. The second action is to depress the paddle switch. The tool will run while the paddle switch is depressed. The grinder will stop as soon as the operator releases the paddle switch. The reason we do not permit the use of a trigger lock is that if the grinder is dropped accidentally, the tool will not stop. If excessive vibration occurs or it operates roughly upon starting, Immediately shut the tool off, unplug it or stop the air and check the grinder and wheel for damage. Test the safety switch on the grinder to make sure it shuts down as the trigger is released. Now ease the wheel into the workpiece with light to medium pressure to avoid kickback and let the tool do the work. Remember to maintain your angle with a grinding wheel. Never run it completely flat, keeping the grinding disc at a 15 to 30 degree angle to the work or according to manufacturer's specifications. 
Do not grind on the side of a cutoff wheel. Do not pinch or jam wheels or let them hit any object while grinding. Do not grind or cut with one hand or use the grinder between the legs while sitting on the floor. Do not wear loose fitting clothing, jewelry or other items that could become entangled in moving parts and tuck and secure long hair. The most dangerous result is kickback. This is where the grinder wheel binds and thrusts away from the workpiece at high speed and flies backwards striking anything in its path. These types of incidents can be prevented by proper body position, two hands on the grinder, one on the body handle and one on the removable T-handle, and the guard properly adjusted to cover half of the disc between the operator and the grinding disc. It is also recommended to hold the grinder against the workpiece with minimum pressure so the disc does not dig in and cause a kickback. Due to its design for grinding, an angle grinder should not be used as a cutting tool where a safer alternative is available or can be obtained. Always pay attention to the spark trail as they can be extremely dangerous. When using an angle grinder that can switch between left-handed and right-handed operation, remember to move the blade guard when you move the handle. Guards and or handles on angle grinders should only be removed for maintenance and storage. Never operate an angle grinder without a guard. Never put an angle grinder down until the disc stops rotating and never apply pressure with your hand or other object to stop a spinning disc. These products require a certain amount of finesse to be used efficiently. Remember, when in doubt, read the instructions or ask your supervisor. Now that you have the knowledge to safely operate an angle grinder, help your fellow employees by passing on this information and demonstrating the correct safety procedure anytime you use one. Remember to also relay all safety focus information to your crew members regarding notices and recalls on equipment and consumables. A job hazard analysis for grinding and buffing should be reviewed with your crew members prior to beginning work to cover all potential exposures. Thanks for joining us and remember to never look the other way where safety is concerned.